You wake to the sweet fragrance of something cooking in the kitchen. You slowly sit up, rub your eyes, and look over towards the kitchen. You see Dia, Leon, and Sunny at the table waiting patiently for their food while Ravi finishes cooking it. Dia, Dia notices you're awake and smiles in your direction. Good morning, sleepyhead, she says. Ravi made pancakes. You want some? Taz is nowhere to be seen. Pancakes? <gasps> wait, 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 hold on, where's Taz? You look around once more as Dia ponders your question. Huh, I don't know where Taz went, she says. I didn't see him when I woke up, Sunny chimes in. He might have gotten up before all of us. Hmm. I'm sure he's fine. Maybe. Um, I think I'm gonna go look for him. Why don't you have breakfast first? It's going to get cold if you run off. I'll be super quick, and then I'll eat all the pancakes when I get back with Taz. What? No! Eat first, Marshy. You ignore Ravi and continue to run out the door. I'll be right back! I promise! I'll be right, right back. Right back. Okay. Um, Taz? Taz? Which way would you have gone? Are you in the- are you in the sus alley? No? Okay, not in the sus alley. Taz? Has anyone seen a little- a little- no, he's not really little. He's actually kind of tall. The uh, silver hair? The wolf? Hello, guard. You're a guard. You're supposed to keep your eye out. Have you seen a, a dog? No? Okay. Taz? Taz? Wait, what is- What it? Taz? Is that- Taz, are you in the tree? What? How did you get up there? Oh, over here. Taz! <laughs> Taz! <laughs> Shake the tree? Okay, okay, okay. Taz! Hold on. Okay. I haven't climbed a tree in a while. I got pretty high. Taz! How did you... I'm not... I'm not a, I'm not a squirrel. Hey! Hi! Uh, Good morning! I heard... Uh, uh, what are you doing in a tree? Oh. Yeah, I went out and I was gonna go to the registrar. I didn't get that far. Wait, you never you never registered. <laughs> you, well, I, I it's it's probably fine. Yeah, it's <laughs> fine. We'll just if anyone asks, we'll just say you are simply a visitor <laughs> from, you know, you're my friend, and we're having a sleepover, and I invited you here. And okay. hold on, I don't want to fall. Yep. It, Okay. I, I could've... I could've... <laughs> anyway, why were you in a tree I, again? You were, like, asleep up there. When did you leave? Uh... It was still dark out. You left in the middle of the night? What? The night's pretty. Fair enough, I guess. Anyway, uh, Ravi made pancakes. You want some? Let's go. <gasps> yeah! Pancakes! Uh, okay. You look at the empty plate that previously had pancakes on it and lean back in your seat with a satisfied sigh. <sighs> My compliments to the chef! Why, thank you, Robbie says with a smug grin. Everyone's attention shifts to Dia as she lets out a gasp. <gasps> uh, Dia? Guys, I know what we're doing today! Dia stands up from her seat on the couch and goes over to the rest of you at the table. She slams the newspaper down on the table and points to an advertisement on the page. We're going to a bake sale! Oh, uh, oh wait, wait, bake sale? That means cookies and cakes and other things! Leon takes the paper from the table and looks at it. Hmm. He gets a smirk on his face. I might have an idea. Uh, yeah! 
Dio snatches the paper away from him. Have fun and eat yummy cookies and cakes, obviously. Right. Leon looks away with a mischievous glint in his eyes. I bet Phil, that seems like fun. Taz says with a smile, ignoring the fact that Leon is definitely definitely has ulterior motives. <gasps> Ravi, you should join! You love baking! This would be the perfect opportunity to show off my skills, Ravi says. He looks at you. Could you help me gather more ingredients? Uh, I mean, sh okay. Raishi, I wanted to hang out with you today, Sunny says with a slight pout. We can still hang out. Getting ingredients won't take that long, theoretically. We'll make it quick, Ravi says. He looks at Dia. Dia, where and when is the bake sale? Um, Dia looks back at the newspaper. It's going on all day at the beach. Perfect. Ravi claps his hands together. That means the market is on the way. He turns back to you. Ready to go, Marshy? Yep. Uh, Sunny, Taz, you want to join us? Sunny nods as she moves closer to you. Taz shrugs. Taz? Er, why not? Great, let's go! Ravi says as he makes his way to the door and out of the house. You and the others go to follow Ravi before you... But before you leave the house, you turn back to Dia and Leon. Uh, see you guys at the bake sale! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> you take only a few steps outside of the house before you're confronted with a familiar dread with yellow eyes. <gasps> Damien! Hey, buddy! Buddy? Damien stares at you with, a, with slight confusion. Oh, right. I guess our last interaction wasn't really the best, huh? You're not mad, are you? I'm not mad. Damien says, as he, as, and you let out a sigh of relief. <sighs> Before your conversation could continue, Robbie interjects. Uh, Marshy, who is this? He says with a hint of hesitation in his voice. You turn back to the others. Oh, right! Ravi, this is Damien. Damien, this is Ravi. And you already know Sunny and Taz, so we don't have to introduce them. <laughs> Hello! Sunny waves to Damien with a smile. Meanwhile, Taz is quiet as he stares at Damien with narrow eyes. Nice to meet you too, Damien, Ravi says. I uh, hate to cut this short, but we... <gasps> oh, 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 Damien can join us! Huh? Ravi is caught slightly off guard by your invitation. What? Damien looks at you. We're going to a bake sale! You can join us if you want! We have more important matters than a bake sale. You pause for a moment, processing what he means by that. It suddenly clicks and your fox ears twitch with disappointment. I know, I can't we do that later? You can wait a day, right? I'd rather not. But, but... Damien is about to say something else, but Taz steps in. Hey, she asked if he could do this later. Taz speaks up as he gets closer to Marshy and Damien. He crosses his arms. We're any plans for the day, so you can either join us or leave. You stay quiet as you nervously glance between the two of them. They both glare daggers into each other, and you desperately hope that a fight doesn't break out. Fine, Damien says. You let out you let out a breath that you didn't know you were holding. Damien looks at you. We can talk we can talk once you're done with your bake sale. Uh, are you, are you, you sure you don't want to join? Damien is quiet for a moment. I'll think about it. He then turns and walks away. Well, that wasn't a no! <laughs> I don't like that guy, Robbie says once Damien is out of earshot. I get a bad vibe from him. He's not as bad as he seems. Robbie look, looks like he wants to say something else, but holds his tongue. <sighs> Whatever, let's get going. He, turn, he turns and continues to make his way down the road. Wait, oh, wait, oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, where are we going? Just with me. Okay, if I'm I'm following you. If I'm right...
You continue to walk down the path before you're abruptly stopped as you get knocked over by a small person with cat ears. That <laughs> Ow! Hey, watch it! The kid yells as they jump as they get up. You, you bumped into me! The cat animan pauses in their tracks. You look at them and see their faces stained with tears. Uh, hey, are you okay? You reach out to the child and they flinch away. You two, st you two stare at each other for a moment. Um, do do you need help? Not unless you could turn back time. They snap. But you can't. No one can. And they hiccup through their tears. And I just want to go home. But the chem won't let me because it's too dangerous. I saw my only friend die, but then she came back, and I'm so happy. But but why didn't she come back and? Not my fam crew. It's not fair. They shout, rubbing, rubbing furiously at their eyes. Their tears don't stop. I just want to go home. You stare at the child in shock as you process what they said. Oh, uh. You and Sunny look at each other with wide eyes. Uh, hey, it's okay. Sunny says, trying to comfort the child. It's not okay! The child suddenly goes quiet, and you'll, you'll hear voices nearby. Their ears perk up, and they look panicked. Hi, I need to hide! The kid runs and hides behind some crates nearby. You look back at them, and they snap at, they, they snap at you. Don't let them know I'm here, got it? You didn't see anything! They stress. Okay. Oh, gosh. Um... Uh, oh, okay. Be be cool. 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 Take a breath. It's fine. We're fine. Hi. Hi. Hello. How are you today? Hello. <laughs> it's okay, my stream chat chart heard all of that, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Let me repeat that entire sentence. Um, hi, uh, I'm looking for my friend. They're like a tween. They're like about this high, you know, just about. Um, they, they kind of ran off and they're kind of emotional and I'm kind of worried about them. Does anyone come by? Maybe, uh, you know, maybe distraught, distressed? No, we totally have not seen a cat kid. Oh, I mean, no. Wait, I didn't. I didn't mention that they were a cat and a man. Uh, lucky guess. <laughs> Buddy, I didn't even say their name. Okay. I literally have said you nothing. Know who my is. I'd really appreciate I literally said nothing. You. <laughs> Give me a second. Give me a second. We just, we received some pretty <sighs> hard news, and I'm just, I'm worried that they're not taking it well, and. I wanted to give them some time, but also at the same time, they're probably really upset, and I... Um... Well... Um... Kitty emerges from his hiding spot with downcast eyes, scrubbing the last of his tears away. He seems reluctant to speak first. The older woman turns to Marcy and her friends. If you would not mind, I think our friends would benefit from a little space, she says, not unkindly. Uh, sure, no, no problem. Marcy says as she takes Sunny's and Taz's hands and drags them away. Thank you, the older woman says as she gives you, Swan, gives you, Swan, a small smile before looking back at Kitty. Kitty, we promised we wouldn't run anymore. Kitty remains silent, eyes promptly locked onto the ground. We're not angry, Catherine adds. I am. I'm so angry, I don't know what to do, Kitty admits quietly, wrapping herself in a hug. I have too many words, but he's so far away. I can't tell him. Don't even know if he'd listen. We could write, you offer unhelpfully, barely managing to hold in your own grievances. It's not the same. Letters just aren't good enough. Not for this. Catherine steps forward, spreading her arms in a wordless offer of comfort. 
It doesn't take Kitty long to accept, sinking into her arms. You know well enough that he'd listen to your every word, she says lightly. He'd listen like your words were his only heir, and then some. Mm, Kitty murmurs. I guess. You know so, silly. Catherine gently scolds, ruffling their hair. Kitty huffs, more fire than sorrow now, occupying their brilliant eyes. Hey! Kitty protests, wriggling free from her grasp. All right, all right, I surrender. I didn't... I didn't mean to run. I just... Couldn't keep it in, they expressed, crossing their arms. Now, you know how I felt. <sighs> Given the unimpressed look Kitty directs your way, your joke does not is not well received. Swan, you turn to the other group that you have Swan, you turn to the other group that you have managed to somehow rope into this. You give them a polite smile before ducking your head down. Uh, sorry about all this. Swan awkwardly smiles. Uh, no worries. If we just wanted to make sure they were okay. Swan nods at you with a soft smile before running a hand through the front of her hair idly. She glances back over towards Kitty and Catherine as the sound of Kitty's laughter begins to grow more prominent. A soft, soft, a soft smile begins to spread over her face as she is relieved that Catherine was easing Kitty's tension. Uh, one moment, she says quickly to you. Uh, yeah, no problem. As Swan scurries back to Kitty and Catherine, you decide to not follow after. You look at the group talking to each other, and you decide to give them some space and time as you see a familiar face stroll up towards the group. I thought all of you were behind me, Robbie says as he chuckles a small bit before getting a bit serious. <laughs> what happened? It, Robbie asks. It has to deal with our new friend, Sunny says as she points over to Kitty. Uh, well, we kind of tried to hide them, but it didn't work. I see. So they're talking about it now? Robbie asks as he tries to make sense of the situation. Taz crosses his arms. Probably. It would make sense since their friend was worried about them. Why were you hiding them? Robbie asks. Well, it wasn't our idea. They asked, so we tried to help. Sunny says as Robbie sighs as he walks closer to the other group. Uh, wait, uh, before you leave. I'm sorry if these three caused you any trouble. Robbie says as he looks at them with a somewhat panicked expression on his face. They were very helpful, actually, Catherine says. Help that I have yet to properly thank, Catherine continues. Thank you so much for finding Kitty, Swan says. Uh, no problem. Marshy beams as she gives a big smile. So we know Kitty and Swan's names. What's what is yours? Taz asks the older woman. I am Catherine. Catherine answers easily, pausing as the medium-sized dog that had been tailing them bumps her leg pointedly. And this is Robo Dog. And you are? Catherine asks as she tilts her head to the side. Uh, well, the one with the wings is Robbie, uh, silver hair is Taz, and the bird girl is Sunny, and I'm Marshy. Well, Marshy, we have to go to the beach for the bake sale. Robbie says as he start starts trying to go there. Wait, you're also going to the bake sale? Kitty asks as he looks at Robbie. Yeah, why? Robbie inquires as he looks at Kitty. We can all th go there together since we're all heading that direction. Sunny says as she smiles. Oh, uh, sure, why not? Sweet. Okay, well, I didn't. That's kind of a coincidence. Well, squad, let's go. Hey, Marsh. What? Sure. Marsh. What? Pat, Pat, why did you reveal everything else? <laughs> Where's the hey, beach? No. Come back over here. Come back oh, over here. Uh, I know we can get there. Okay. You tried. That's all that matters. Uh, this is the beach. There's the beach. I'm hopping there is the wall. The beach. Why? Why are you hopping the wall? <laughs> okay. that, that, that that might be against some type of rule. Okay. See, I'm totally. I'm they totally get not it. a part of the. I'm totally not a part of the Aegean Vanguard or anything. What's the um, uh, the, 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 the the what's that? 
Do, have you not seen the guards around the city? <gasps> That's what they're called? Oh. Yeah, I the always, Indian I always guard. say hi to them. They, they're my friends. We're chilling. They, they'll, okay. they'll bail me out. <laughs> sure. I've never heard any of them mention you, but I also don't talk to that many of them. Okay, uh, look, it's always the ones, the ones... There's the one at the bottom of the stairs when you first enter the 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 Astra Centrum area, and then mm -hmm. and then the the ones at the, the 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 archway to the docks. Yeah, those are my besties. I say hi to them every time. Okay, I guess I'll I guess I'll ask them about you. <laughs> anyway, I, mean, you I me smell off the really really scrum scrumptious cakes and cookies, and I want well, some. Yeah, it's a bake sale. It's more cake. It's more cake. Who's like the host of this event? Wait. Oh, that's wait. Amir. Who's the? I don't oh, know. Oh, there's his <gasps> Dan. What? Oh, my friend Dan's here. Hello. He's just looking at us <laughs> menacingly. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just confused a little bit because you just kind of. I was about to get barrels, and then I just heard that that one talking. <laughs> We... Oh, well, see, these are, these are, um, I guess, are you my friend now? Is this how this works? I guess. I'm making um, so, so many these friends. Are, these are my new friends. Um, I ran into them while trying to find Kitty, because Kitty decided to run off. But, um, we're here now! I, I heard Amira was doing a bake sale, and I decided to participate. I want to participate, okay. too. I want to have cakes and cookies and other pastries. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I actually was kind of working the event i've recently been working with amir for with this like drink stand and stuff and he asked me to come help out with setting up but i guess i guess i oh. could kind of yeah he called it um do you guys know what the event's called i don't uh... remember honestly i barely remembered it was today kitty had to drag me out of bed Cake by the ocean <gasps> that's what it was that's so funny <laughs> i just remember it had the word cake Cake by the there ocean. There is definitely Anyways, cake by the yeah. ocean. Um, sorry, didn't introduce myself to you or you. I'm I'm Dan. Oh. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Marshy. This is Taz, and then yeah, at the end. Yeah. Hey guys, I'm back, and guess who I found? Robbery throws his thumb thumb behind him, and and on cue, Dia appears. Hey, Dia grins and waves at the group. Kitty scrunches their brows together before tilting their head at the, to the side. Who is this? Kitty asks, their tone apprehensive. <gasps> Dia! Oh, it is Dia. How are ya? Taz asks as he gives a wave. I'm great! Uh, who are these guys? Dia questions as she points towards Dan and Swan. Oh, these are my friends! Where she says excitedly. Uh, greetings! I'm Swan! It's nice to meet you. Swan says as she gives an awkward smile. Hey, I'm Dan. Daniel Trades. Dan, for some reason, decides to snap snap out a, a few finger guns in the direction of the newcomer. He smiles awkwardly and for some reason, Dia giggles, delighted by the interaction. <laughs> nice to meet you two. The woman hums, her grin warm. I got here with Leon, but he he's not here. He's currently arguing with person right now, Dia says as she shrugs. Uh do you know what he's he was talk do you know who he was talking to? Marcia asks as she tilts her head to the side. Dia blinks before placing a finger on her chin. She hums for a brief moment before before speaking. Hmm. Not really. I just remember them near that cute drink stand over there. Oh, that's Amir's drink bar. He's been preparing all day for this event. Wonder why that guy is bothering him. Dan hums the question before stretching his arms over his head. Uh, maybe we should go and see. As you all walk over to the drink... the. As you all walk over to the drink stand, you see the light blue-haired draken talking to someone behind the stand, his body bracing bracing the counter as he looks down at the clipboard. 
Suddenly, he moves his gaze, gaze upward at the large, fishy bartender. So, you're telling me I can't sell any of my wares for the bake sale? Leon asks, squinting his eyes as he as he rests his, rests his arms against the counter. I mean, it's, it's a bake sale, so... Amir makes a so-so hand gesture as he explains. It does make sense, considering that the money goes to... Amir begins to further explain, but his voice is suddenly cut off by Leon's. He is looking back down at the clipboard, disregarding Amir and his words. Uh-huh. You try to get Leon's attention, but he completely ignores you. Though Amir does give you a crisp wave for your attempt before turning back to the dragon. Can I still advertise my own products for the bake sale, though? Leon questions as Amir raises a brow. The fins on his, the side of his face flex. Yeah, I, I, I mean, everyone kind of is since it's a community event. We're all coming together to... Amir says again, but is rudely interrupted. Okay, I don't need the fluff. Thank you for explaining the core stuff to me. Leon says as he pushes his body off the counter. He quickly grabs hold of his pen, signs the name before running... before turning on his heel and to walk towards you. From a distance, Amir watches Leon walk off with a bit of a confused face. He lingers his gaze for a moment before getting back to work. Hey there, Marshy. How are your new friends? Leon asks. Uh, awesome! <laughs> Marcia, you quickly introduce your new companions to Leon with a cheerful demeanor. Well, nice to meet you all, Leon says as he turns to Ravi. Hey, Ravi, buddy. Could you do me a big favor? Ravi asks as he shoots a glare at Leon. Does it have to do with the plan you made at the house? So, the person running the bake sale said I had to only sell pastries, but that doesn't stop me from advertising my own products, Leon says with a grin on his face. I mean, why would you sell jewelry at a bake sale? That doesn't make any sense, Sunny says as she looks at Leon and si and as he sighs. Could you help me out, Ravi, please? Leon asks. Ravi tries to move away from Leon, and he as he stopped once more. <sighs> I'm... I'm good. Please, I'm begging you, Ravi! Leon says he, he looks at him. Uh, There's a long pause between the group, mostly due to the fact that Leon has, his, has now moved from vocally pleading to grabbing at Ravi's hand. hand. His knees hit the ground with a hard thud, his eyes large and... Bleh, large and round as they look up at at the other, Ravi continues to stare at Leon with disdain. That is, until he turns his head and lets out a sigh. <sighs> Fine, I'll help you, Ravi says as he looks at Leon, who smiles. Interesting turn of events. <laughs> oh god, guys. So let's go then, Leon says as Ravi and himself leaves the group. Did they just leave after Leon begged to join? Sunny questions as she tilts her head to the side. Wasn't I supposed to help them? Marshy questions as she sh as she looks at Sunny Dientaz. I believe you were supposed to help them, but now they are working together. Taz says as he shrugs. They appear to be scheming, Catherine notes as she looks... Oh. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine notes as she looks at Robbie and Leon. Yeah. Oh, guys. Oh, they so are. So your friends are rather high energy. <laughs> yep. Oh dear. Yeah. I was about to say the same thing, Kitty. <laughs> but I can't exactly say the. I can't. I mean. I, are you I, allowed I, to say I, such things, or are you, like, on duty, since Amir no. was having you help? Oh, uh, well, I can. I mean, I'm technically working the thing, but at the same time, I can kind of appreciate the whole using your eyes, like, puppy dog eyes, to get what you want, because I oh, just Oh, yeah, did I do that, that all the time. Oh, I, ju I literally just did it. Oh, like, Kitty knows how to do that, that trust me. Hey, hey, we have four people who know how to do it. <laughs> I can't- hey. why don't I know how to do this? How is this 
a skill you learn. Okay. You learn a lot of things in the wild. Well, I just okay. know how to look like I'm panicked, apparently. You know, deer in headlights or whatever. That, that's useful in some situations, maybe. Just faint. A little bit. I mean, <laughs> that's no, faint. I'd rather not. You did technically save no, that me one time because of it, but we don't need to talk about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, if, if any people get attention, so that also works. But I that's guess not. So. No, I just I mean, do it. Yeah. To, I just do it to get what I want. Um, not even to get attention. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be completely honest with you there. <laughs> Understandable. That makes you sound that? like such a great person. <laughs> oh, I'm a fantastic person. What do you mean? Well, the guards of loved are. me in prison. What? what? Oh, right. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, Edwin's still talking. Oh, oh. So, okay, oh, I hold on. Edwin. I have a question. Oh. I have many questions. First of all, you, you're you're a guard. You were in prison. That's, that actually makes sense. I didn't mind. arrest him. Oh, well. Huh. Okay, so you see, when I joined the guard, um, Dan was like my first case or whatever that I was helping with after he got out of prison. He got in prison from being really insistent, I think, on his case because I some other people were dude. doing anything. Yeah, he also did that. That's kind of assault. They knocked him out. Okay. Almost. I laid him out. I didn't, I didn't hire you. You're too young. It's okay, Kitty. You can have big <laughs> dreams. But yeah, anyways, yeah. Um, I was well, yeah, in jail for a, pe for a period of time. And then Swan was the first person to ever actually help me with my situation. My situation being um, something that not many people would consider serious. It was to do with a flower. A flower? Uh, I, 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 I won't. A very I, important flower. Yeah. Um, Long, long story that can be explained I mean, properly. I mean, I guess if the flower is very important to you, it would be more than just a flower. Yes, ex exactly. Yeah, it was definitely more. <laughs> Do you guys want to check out the um event? I mean... Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, no, y'all really wanted a... I don't know, you were excited about cake. Oh, cake, cake, yeah, cake, 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 Bread. He has good. He's bread. I see you all came to my bread stall. That tells me that you may want to know more about the staple in our diet. Before any of you can say anything, the man begins. Now, what is one of the most important components of making bread is the yeast. Yeast is from the fungi kingdom, which means it's a living creature. Active yeast is what we consider to be alive, while inactive is dead. That so-called inactive yeast, on the other hand, have been deactivated through heat treatment to break the yeast cells and to release critical components of nutritional interest. So-called nutritional yeast, or yeast extracts, are thus fermentively inactive. He takes it in a breath. <gasps> Pretty neat, huh? Wait, I just wanted bread. Uh, I- yeast. I guess we're not gonna get bread. I just told them a lot. Just a, just a right. lesson in Ooh. yeast science. What? We just got a lesson. We just got a lesson. Wanting bread. I've I've tried to make bread before, but I, I don't. It didn't really turn out very well. well I, I, of, I I really struggled to keep the yeast alive long enough. I mean, some, some bread is easier to make, but um, most oh, bread is. Sorry, he's looking at us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. <laughs> sorry, sir. I'm just sorry, so sorry, sir. We didn't. We don't mean to be talking about your yeast in front of <laughs> just you. A little confused. <laughs> Uh, a little bit confused. Just a wee uh, bit. The sun is so bright all the time. I really, I mean, don't it get is. sunburnt. I would be the one to get sunburnt. I'm the you palest one here. The one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely be the one to get sunburnt out of uh, all of us. Your cheeks are a little you know, red. I'm in you really might sunny be places. I'm surprised it hasn't happened. Yet. What is this? Hello. All of you walk around as you eventually see a sign that says "Buy one, get one" in large red print. As you get closer to it, you see a woman sitting there as she looks at you. Hello there. Welcome to my booth. For one piece of fudge, you can The matchmaker says as she offers her hand as she looks up to see a familiar face. Surprisingly, her face doesn't fall. Oh, I didn't think I would see you again so soon. The matchmaker continues. Hi, again. Dan gives... Dan says as he gives a lazy salute. Uh... You... you know her? Marshy asks as she looks at Dan. Dan lets out a sigh before shaking his head. 
exactly. Oh. <laughs> uh, hello, I'm Swan, and this is Marshy, Catherine, Kitty, Robodog, Sunny, and that one's Tass. The matchmaker looks at Swan and Marshy before quickly standing up. She startles you as her chair moves back with a terrible sound. Mm. You two are interesting, the matchmaker says as she clasps her hands together. From behind you, you hear Kitty snicker. This one is interesting, all right. Their voice was just loud enough to be muffled, but but their words were clear. Swan, you furrowed your eyebrows and shoot them a look. What do you mean they're interesting? Taz asks as he tilts his head in confusion. They're cool people, so that would make sense if they're interesting. Sunny says, trying to make sense of it. Uh, yeah, hey, it looks like she wants to buy something. The woman from behind the table's attention shifts quickly to look over at Catherine, and she quickly moves to get in front of her. Like a cat to a laser pointer, Madame Matchmaker has, thoroughly been, has been thoroughly distracted. For now. Catherine seems relatively fine playing the role of diversion, even mildly amused at the group's antics. You do readings. What do you get from me, Catherine? Oh. Catherine asks in order to keep her attention, taking out a few coins and placing them down on the table. She doesn't appear to have much faith in the matchmaker's ability. The matchmaker looks at them and looks at their hands as they hum a little bit, a tiny bit before looking back up at, the ca back up at Catherine. <laughs> oh. Spooky? You look to find what you have lost. But they're searching in all the wrong places, the matchmaker says, tilting her head to the side. They fix Catherine with an intense look. Catherine chuckles, amused. Oh, and just what have I lost? Hmm. The spirits do not tell all, the matchmaker mulls thoughtfully. Hmm. That will be all, then. Thank you for the entertainment. She says with a sigh, shaking her head. No. Wait. I see it now. It's... It is not an item. You have lost a part of yourself. Broken. Torn. Discarded it was. But now you wander. The matchmaker explains, reaching over the counter and grasping onto Kath Catherine's hand as if to keep her there. Catherine threes his eyes transfixed on the woman. The spirits tell me. Yes, you will regain this. You will regain what you have thought lost. And once you have, there is one across the ocean that awaits. A raven, both fair and true. The matchmaker explains, almost breathlessly. There's a momentary pause. Anything else? The spirits tell me no more, the matchmaker- Oh, Catherine manages his voice strained. Spirits tell me no more, the matchmaker says, finally pulling back. Catherine tentatively releases a breath she's been holding. Kind of kind features now furrowed and tense. She's shaken. Catherine? Swan asks hesitantly, concerned. I am fine. Catherine murmurs after a moment, shaking herself as if she'd only just come back to her senses. She turns to you all with the nervous energy fill filling her, fueling her steps. I am going to take a walk. I will be back. She says, as if reasoning it out. Swan nods, hesitant to interrupt her thoughts. Catherine gives you all a tight smile before sharply turning and leaving your presence. After a few moments of awkward silence, all you hear the woman speak up again. So, who wants fudge? The matchmaker says as she smiles a small bit. I think we're good. Um, what the uh. huh? Yeah, you guys kind of you might want to back away slowly. Slowly this way, slowly this way, slowly this way, slowly this way. Yeah, no, she's nuts. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay, so me and Strahd actually went back to her, she has a tent at the, at the docks or something, and she does these reading, love readings all the time. And so, why did I even thought, Strahd see her? Uh, because she knows everyone's business, and guess what? She knew where Casey was. Um, because oh, she was okay, it was Zach. Business. Then I wondered if you made it a habit to hang out with my boss. No, I literally never met him until that day. Um, Fair enough. I've never met that uppity nobleman until literally that day. Wait, nobleman? Swan. What? What? D Dan! Swan! I'm confused. What? Are you telling me he's a noble and I have not realized have... it this entire Wait. time? 
has Hold bag. Up. He has literal bags of coins I'm... rattling in his pocket. He dresses okay, like- Okay, I didn't know that made you a noble! I'm confused. No wonder that man paid for our lunch like it was nothing. Sheesh. Yeah, I mean, Jitty, you-, you Okay, he literally took that. us to lunch to see if we were criminals. What other stalls are there? there I mean, that one doesn't- we, There's see. cake by. Cake, uh, cake, where, where, cake, where, where, cake, where, where, hello! Where, where. I'm often happy for events like this, the woman says, letting out a pleasant hum. It's not often that I get to visit the beach. I'm usually busy trying to make a few copper coins, but this event feels like a vacation. I mean, look at the waves out here. They're huge. You get murmurs, about to comment on the nice weather until she suddenly turns to you. It's kind of weird how water is meant to keep you alive, and yet it's strong enough to take you down. Would you like some cake? Yes, please. Oh, as ominous as all <laughs> heck. I just want And some that's speaking cake. from someone who's been a part of the Chocolate cake. sprinkle I cake. I just want cake and bread. Why is everyone so I don't know. Oh, Are you normal? Kitty, kitty, hey, kitty, kitty, come here. Kitty, come here. When you grow up, you'll realize everyone in your life is weird. And oh. you just have to learn to live with it. Yep. <laughs> Are you normal? Uh, hello? Are you- that's a little rude to walk up and say. Are you normal? Oh, wait. I, uh, I know who this is. Oh? As you wander the little event, a few tents catch your eye. There appears to be quite a few people here selling, but there doesn't seem to be a lot of people coming to look at the products. It's relatively easy to walk over, glance at something in a tent, and then carry on. That is until you walk up to a rather red booth. There are beats everywhere, to put it plainly. Beats on the shelves, beats on the walls. You're pretty sure you even see a book in the back that says the joys of beats. Before anyone could question this odd sight, a man suddenly pops up from behind the booth. He is short with pug-like ears. His face is mostly covered with shaggy hair, while his lower part of his face is shaded by a large mustache. Hey, customers, finally. My butt was hurting from sitting on that sand. Oh, oh um, who are you? Normal, hopefully. That's just Beat Sky. Oh. I met him my first day, day in Erwin, I think. Uh, Dan, motion. Spy. Dan quickly motions. <laughs> That's Beat's boy to you, the shorter man explains, br briefly offended by Dan's introduction. Uh, yeah, I met him the second day of I got to Erwin, I think. The first, second. He just sat outside of the end and yelled about Beat's. Dan quickly explained to you both. He's glancing between you and this strange pug-like man. Dan appears to be somewhat on edge. Wanna try my cookied beets? The man's voice barked out of him. <laughs> cookied beets. Oh, <laughs> the three of you glance in between each other, trying to figure out if any one of you knew what he was talking about. However, none of you have ever heard of such a thing. Not in this world, and not in the waking world. <laughs> of course, the questions began. Does he mean a cookie made of beets? If not, what does he mean to be a beat that is cookied? Then the next big thing I'm telling you. So why don't you try out perfection? Yeah, I, I, I think I'll pass. <laughs> Suddenly his demeanor shifts. However, not in the way that you would expect it to. The man who was previously speaking at you aggressively is now curling him into himself, his hands gri gripping the tray of cookied beats you haven't previously noticed. A soft, almost whimpering no sound escapes him from him as he looks down sadly at his tray. Oh, okay. His voice sounds pitiful. It makes some of your heart strings get tugged on. The next words he speaks come out in a tremor. Well, I, I guess no, no one wants to give old Beats Boy a chance. No, 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 we'll try them. I'll, I'll take Please. a beat cookie. Really? Oh boy, oh boy! He ex starts to exclaim. His pug-like ears perk up and he looks at your group expectantly. Though, after a moment, you feel a hand touch both of your arms. Dan has reached in between you two and is smiling awkwardly at the man he named Beats Boy. Can you give us a moment? Dan hums. Beats Boy nods enthusiastically. Of course! It can be time to bring you out my most special cookie beats! His voice sings in excitement. Though, though the gravelly nature of it causes it to fall a little flat. As soon as Beats Boy goes behind his stall, Dan turns to the group. Are you 
sure, you want to try his product. <gasps> you were so sad he was when we said, no, we have to. I hear you. I also have morbid yeah. curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. I hear you, Dan says quickly. But as someone who is a little well-versed in plant life, beetroots aren't exactly known for being in desserts for a reason. Nearby, Kitty scrunches their nose in a disgusted manner. They lean over to Swan and tug at her sleeves. The last time I had beets, they were boiled and nasty. They loudly whisper. I don't know how they were cooked, but they were bitter. Uh, there is a, a point to be a little hesitant, mayhaps. No! Marcia exclaims, putting her foot down. You saw how sad he was! He probably hasn't sold anything, let alone have someone try his food. Dan goes to rub at the back of his neck, sheepishly looking off to the side. He then glances back over towards the booth and begins to grimace visibly. Marsh, he's literally putting pickled beets on top of his delicacies as we speak. No more complaining. We're eating them for the sake of joy. Despite Dan's persistent protests, he eventually quiets down. Marshy, through the sheer determination of wanting to be kind, has stopped him from arguing. Before the rest of you could respond, Beats Boy returns with a brand new tray of his desserts. He hums happily, and for the first time from under his large mustache, you can see a large grin. He stops in front of you and presents you the tray, and dear unity, you don't know how to describe the sight. They're cookie cooked beets squashed into flat rounds and covering them is some sort of crumb. Perhaps that's what made them cookied. To top it off, there are thin slices of pickled beets. I'll take a cookie. Time to take these cookies. <laughs> okay! <laughs> You all grab a cookie at levels of excitement. Marshy, your determination makes you grab the first one you see and you quickly bring it to your mouth and take a large bite. At first, the flavor doesn't hit you and your pureness seems to fight against the pungent smell. But eventually, as you swallow, you begin to seriously regret your decision. You force yourself to stay smiling, which makes Dan curious. After all, if you're smi still smiling, that cookie must not be that bad. Dan takes a bit of takes a more tentative bite and scrunches his brows together. But weirdly enough, there is no disgust on his face. Swan, your two companions have fooled you. Their expressions of strained delight and mild interest led you to believe that the cookies must be fine. You take a bite and immediately regret it. Lucky for you, Kitty was able to comfort you as you find yourself a spot to crouch at, and you attempt to not audibly retch. Despite each of your reactions, Beats Boy appears to be in a state of bliss. His eyes are closed and his smile is wide. I'm telling ya, beets are gonna be the next hot commodity, don't you think? Mm-hmm. Yep, very good, Beats Boy. He gives a pleasant <laughs> laugh, but for looking at you, Marshy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now that you try them, you should get out of here. You're a little caught off guard by how abrupt his tone shifts. Lingers aren't good for business. And there are more people out there that need to know the potential of cooking beets. All right. Well, I hope that goes well for you. Ooh. That was, Ooh. you know, nothing like I've uh, ever had in my life. I, it, it was, was quite. Why did I trust you? You made me think it was fine. It wasn't. Uh, I, okay. I have to agree. It I have to agree. was I definitely to something very unique. <laughs> A very innovative, if you will. Oh, so. um. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> As you look over, you see a yellow-eyed dread be being by themselves. A sudden feeling of excitement bubbles in your chest. Marshy, you turn to your newfound friends and point towards Damien. <gasps> oh, right! I totally forgot! I, I want- you guys need to meet him! You hum happily before bounding over quickly. Though, as you approach and he begins to take notice, you're suddenly immediately stopped by Taz. Hey, how are you doing, Marshy? Taz says as he looks at Marshy. I'm, I'm doing good. Is Tia pleasant pause? wonder what she's doing. You should, check, you should check that out. Taz says as he points over to Dia, who is standing near some pies. You can't tell what her facial expression is. Did someone say pies? Have fun with that. Taz says as he gives you a little- gives you a big smile. 
For some reason, no matter where you step, Taz is appearing to body block you from proceeding towards Damien. You can't help but raise an eyebrow before shrugging. Oh, okay. Okie dokie. You okay? What? Don't worry. I think the pies. I think. Well, there's that. There's this like. Didn't thing your right friend Dia have blue hair? Yeah. Dia. Dia. Oh, you've met a few blue-haired people, honestly. You're one of them. Congrats. Oh, I found it. Yeah. Pies. As all of you look around, you see Dia drooling a little bit. I want pies. Dia says, as any of. As any of you can see the hunger in her eyes. Oh, I see that you're looking at the pies at the pie eating contest, the vendor says, as he smiles at all of you. Uh, can we join? Marcia asks as she bounces in anticipation. Is that fine? Like, there's there's no rules or, like, uh, yeah? Sure, all you need is a stomach and a few copper coins per person, the vendor says as they talked with their hands. How many for five people? It's five copper per person. Why are you interested? The vendor questions as you see Dia quickly move her hand to her pocket and leave some copper coins out on the table. Well, I see that I have a very excited person that wants to compete, the vendor says as they smile. Uh, Dia, are you sure you want to be spending that much on us? Marshy says as she looks at Dia with a confused look. It's fine. Don't worry about it, Marshy. I just like pastries. <laughs> Dia says as she pats Marcia on her head. This is going to be... Hold on, English? <laughs> this no. is going to be fun! Kitty says with excitement in their voice. Uh, what flavor are the pies? I believe it's blueberry pie, the vendor says as they look over towards Swan. As she... Sw towards Swan. She's kind of grossed out. <sighs> Shoot, I hate blueberry. Swan says with some disgust in her voice. Are you really going to complain about the flavor? <laughs> Dan questions as she as he looks over at Swan. I am not a fan of blueberries. Swan states simply as she shrugs. Really? But blueberries are so good. It's weird that you don't like them, Swan. Kitty says as they smirk at you. Considering you look like a blueberry. <laughs> Hey, I cannot be a fan of a fruit, okay? Swan says as she looks over at Kitty. She moves to the braid, gently lifting the hair to inspect it. Was it really that blue? If you're all if you're all done, then you can please stop If you are all, all are done, then you can please stop talking, please. The vendor says as they clap their hands together. Welcome, welcome to my pie eating contest that you. Thank you so much for joining. The vendor continues as they walk around. There are two rules. Rule one eat as many pies as you're able to in the allotted time. Rule two have fun. Their voice manages to capture the attention of a few onlookers. This, this gets the vendor even more excited, and soon they are counting down. Three, two, one. You can begin! Pie! Nom, 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 Just like that, you're off to the races. Marshy, you first find the contest to be relatively easy. After all, blueberries were delicious. However, after the second pie, you begin to, to feel a little lethargic. Your excitement enlarged your hubris. And you realize that this was going to be more difficult than you initially thought. Dan had decided just to smack his face into the pie. Why? Logically, to immediately get his face in a large proportion of the pie. This did come with some consequences, namely the fact that he had to slow down on the first pie in order to find his glasses. Swan, you barely tried. You picked at the pie, you ate a piece. However, your disdain for blueberries made it hard for you to finish a large portion of the pie. As some time passed, all of you, you hear the sound of a bell being hit as the vendor walks up on the stage. Thank you all for- Thank you all for your for your participation. The vendor says as they look they look around. Let's give a round of applause for the people who did this. The vendor continues as they smile, as all of you hear are people the sound of people clapping their hands. <laughs> the pies were so good. Dia mumbled. However, as you look at her, she looked like she was about to fall asleep. Thank you, little lady. That means a lot, the vendor says as they cough. We have our winner. 
The child cat animan with the nice jacket, the vendor continues. I did it! Kitty says with pride. Hey, congrats, Kitty! Me Why do all of you like blueberries and I don't? <laughs> because they're blueberries. And I, I hold think... on. I still have some pie. Okay, but they my... half look more oh, purple. Oh, you have last, pie in your hair. Season. Hold on, hold on. Oh, hold, hold, up. Up. Oh, hold, hold on. on. There you go, there you yeah. go, there you go. How did, uh, okay. I don't want to get this I, on my I, jacket. I just, I don't... I thought it was a good Got idea it. in the in the uh, okay. You know, I also thought about it too, but I I I kind of wanted to enjoy my pie instead of have it all over my okay. face. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Yay! Yay! You are yummy. The blueberries are more purple looking anyway than blue. They're misleading. But they're blueberries. <laughs> but they're purple. Well, what next? I don't know. I kind of got really. Oh, Damien appears to be approaching your group. A determined look on his face. Marshy, you smile at him and give him a friendly wave while Swan and Dan glance between each other with curiosity. What's up with that guy? Dan asks aloud. No, he's my friend. He's probably just... Where Marshy could finish her sentence, she glances back to see that Taz has stepped in Damien's way. The group looks on as the two have a quick conversation, with Taz soon ushering the dread to the drink counter. Taz's smile appears cold as he forces him to sit before saying something to Amir. I'm glad a newcomer. I'm glad to help a newcomer to the tropical drink scene. Amir's voice loudly purred. As Taz walked away, Damien, tri Damien tried to reach after him, but then Amir began talking, and Damien was truly trapped in the worst possible way for him by socializing. Oh no! Strange that Taz, Taz keeps doing this, but hey, at least Amir is happy to have a new friend. Oh no! He has to socialize. Taz, what have you done? Well, Amir's really friendly. I mean, I like... I have died. Um, hmm, hmm. I'm like, like, have you ever just, like, sat at Amir's stall? I mean, hey, I will go over there, Paul. I'll go over there, Paul, okay? <laughs> okay. I'll be okay. Maybe. Make, make sure he's fine. To be fair, I did this to him, so in all fairness, I should... Sacrifice. Sacrifice. I'm sorry. Hey. Hey. Little, we got blonde oh, guy. Hi. Hi. While walking around, all of you hear music being played as you look around and find source of it. Where's that coming from? Kitty questions as they look around. It's coming from this way. Dan questions as he starts to walk in the direction of the music being played, and soon you see a person sitting with a guitar case on the ground that would ha have some copper coins in it. Hey, uh, you, you doing good? I am fine. I am great, in fact, because I'm sharing my music with the city, the guitar says as they start to strum a few chords as a nice melody fills your ears. Your, m your music is quite nice. Sunny says as she smiles at the guitarist. Thank you so much, little lass. You can really show how nice it is by dropping a few copper coins in the case. The guitarist says as he smiles back at Sunny and he continues to strum some chords. Uh, excuse? I mean, she can if she wants to. That sounded worse the first time. Yeah. The guitarist said bashfully as they rubbed at the back of their head. Tess is bluntly. Well, I'm so sorry about that. I hope you enjoyed it, the guitarist said. No problem. So many people. There's always a gu guitar guy on the beach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every time I'm here, there's a guy at least sitting at the fire pit over there. Not even under the sun. Or the, no, no. The, the, the umbrella. Go stay over with Damien because I did that to him. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. No, I completely understand. Good luck! Oh, I think that, that might make it worse. <laughs> what, 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 what is, what is with, what is all that? By the way, that seems a little. Yeah, he kind of like keeps getting in the way. Um, or or he... I'm misreading. I kind of said I would help him with something, and he wanted to do that something today. But then I had other all their plans and he's probably a little annoyed that i had to do my other plans so he's probably looking for me oh so is that why taz stops you from unless going he's over? actually here to enjoy the bake sale and if that's the case we shouldn't be bothering him and have him let him have a nice day anyway sorry i, I think maybe he got your message <laughs> 
Is there any other stalls we haven't checked out yet? Or oh. um, there's just one there's about this one. seeing a mirror for detail. There's cookies. Cookies. I haven't seen Mother in a while, but baking makes me feel like I'm home with her. The woman hums a delightful tune as she shuffles the different cookie types on the counter. She appears to be organizing them by their types. Maybe when I see her again, I can show her how good at baking I've gotten. <gasps> oh, that's really sweet. It is very sweet compared She's to so everyone pretty. else. She's, She's so pretty. pretty. Oh she my really god. Is. Her hair is like as red as mine is blue. Oh my god. I know.